about NBR WrestleMania 12 review. Uh, I'm your host, Mike. And I'm Frank. And let's get right into this. Man, I feel like we've been doing this forever. Yes. WrestleMania 12. This one was one of my personal favorites. I really like this one. I thought the roster in 96 had a huge comeback from 95. They brought a lot of people back in. Yeah. Some, some young talent came new talent. in. They, they hired some new guys. Uh, for example, Jake the Snake Roberts returned. They brought in Vader. They, uh, right. um, Ahmed Johnson uh, came on the scene. Uh, Shawn Michaels was at the top of his game. Triple H. Triple H uh, had arrived. Steve Austin. That's correct. Yep. Was starting to be the part of it now. Later on in 96. Rock. All that pays off. All, all of all of those guys eventually. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Now, unfortunately, this was the year that we lost two of the biggest stars. So Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, a.k.a. Razor Ramon and Diesel. But they were still, for what they had as, as a roster, I think they still did a good job. Yeah. And so let's get right into it. March 31st, 1996, Anaheim, California. They were at the Arrowhead Pond. 18,853 people on attendance to see the main event, the first of its kind. And I'll get to that in a minute. And I'm sure every Bursting fan knows, oh, I know what that is. So let's go right to it. Opening match of the night, six-man tag team match. It was Ahmed Johnson, Jake the Snake Roberts, and now fan favorite Yoko Zuna. Yep. Versus the British Bulldog, Owen Hart, and Vader. Now, this was a pretty good match. I liked it. It, it got Jake Roberts involved in a storyline after his Rumble return. And everybody thought, I don't—I I know I did, when he was going to return at the Rumble, I really thought it was going to be the heel Jake the Snake. Because you remember, that's the photo they showed. Yeah, yeah. When they said that he was returning. Yes, he And I really returned. thought, I'm like, oh, wow, he's back. And the first thing I'm thinking was, where's the Undertaker? We got to do this. Yeah. But they brought him back as he as uh, he had found God. He was religious. His snake was uh, the albino named Revela- uh, Revelations. Yeah. And no, more, no more Lucifer. No more Lucifer. No more Damien. No. And we can actually thank Jake the Snake Roberts for helping later on that year. Yeah. Bring yeah. on a, a, a huge one of my personal favorite slogans of all time. And invertedly, yeah. Yeah, and when we get to King of the Ring updates, we'll definitely get into that. Now, this match was 13 minutes, 8 seconds. Unfortunately, it didn't go Ahmed and Jake's way, especially Yokozuna. It went Bulldog, Owen, and Vader get the win. Um, This was really, really the decline of Yokozuna, but I thought it was funny this year because they turned him fan favorite because now Cornette doesn't want two big men in his stable. Yoko and Vader never got along. But what's funny is all of a sudden Yokozuna – speaks perfect English where the character before that yeah the, all he would say was bonsai then he actually said that he was from Samoa yeah they, they kind yeah. of changed and then which, Fuji which we already knew and then Fuji had the American flag waving the American flag outside the ring yeah now you know seeing Fuji as a fan uh, favorite kind of I was like really what's going shocked me I'm what's like, going on this is not even as a wrestler you're not yeah. a, you know you're never yeah. a fan favorite and you're not yeah. good at it <laughs> not at all please but. go please leave your friend go but but this was an exciting match it was very fast paced like it was non-stop just action then you had sometimes you had all the guys in the ring yeah so and then like, you had the power you had the power too you remember yeah. Andre, Ahmed Johnson guys. Was a big guy you know what's funny there's a spot where Ahmed Johnson is just cleaning house yeah and he's no selling everything he's just cleaning house and then Vader's there and he starts screaming at Vader come on and Vader just looks at him and he turns around and goes he goes outside the ring and you know what I was thinking to myself? I'm like, I think it was because Vader's supposed to be this monster. Yeah. And and he sees the way Ahmed Johnson is working that I think maybe he got scared that Ahmed Johnson is going to no sell his moves. Yeah. And that, that can't happen. So he just ducked out the side, got outside the ring. Yeah. It, it, and, and you remember they had the whole problem with Vader because I think when they brought him in, they were going to start calling him Big Van Vader. Yeah. Like he was at WCW, but there was some type of uh, copyright uh, thing, not with WCW. Maybe Japan, I believe it maybe? was in New J- in Japan. Yeah. So they started calling him the man they called the man Vader, they call which Vader. And I didn't really like. The, I liked the, no, the nickname they gave him, the Mastodon. Well, the Mastodon Vader was fine, but initially Vince wanted to make him the Mastodon. Not Vader, just the Mastodon. I, I, I was happy with Vader, but and I wasn't was so- happy call, saying the man they call Vader. Yeah, and they didn't let him say it. He was supposed to, you know, Vader time was his big thing. And then yes. Vince, Vince didn't like that because he didn't want the people to cheer for him. He's like, oh, he's a heel. You can't say it's Vader time, and which is ridiculous. But, but they oh. put it in his opening music. But they didn't want him to say it's Vader time. 
Well, Vince is funny I, like that, anyway. It, he is. Well, he, again, he wants his own personal stamp on yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. And I was actually excited when they signed him away from WWE. So was I. So was I. Yeah. I mean, this was a this was a still a big name because mm-hmm. he was just coming off a year long feud with Hulk Hogan. With Hogan, yeah. WCW. And Hogan, not listen, not for nothing. Hogan did a good job putting him over. Like, yes, he did. When they fought, you felt like, oh man, like Hogan's in trouble. Yeah. So for to Hogan's credit. You know, he, he, he did a good even job. Ric Flair worked pretty well with Vader. Yeah, yeah. You know, they they had their feud, and he worked with him. The only thing I didn't like about Vader and WCW was the the cheesy gimmick with the helmet when they oh, when they first six, started. With the well, that's like smoke coming out, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing I didn't. I thought that was yeah. kind of cheesy yeah. at a time where they had extremely cheesy things like Oz yeah, yeah. and all of that. Yeah. But um, when they, oh god, when they when they signed Vader, I thought, okay, this is the bounce back, and this is what I was talking about earlier as far as them stacking their roster now, getting mm-hmm. a little better. And Vader, to me, oh, I always thought he could have been, you know, champion. Yeah. yeah Considering he was former WCW champion, but yeah. he never got one opportunity. We'll get into that in some yeah. discussion. But in any event, that's the way that match went down. Now, our next match, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to announce the match, but I'm going to tell you, everybody here, what the match was originally supposed to be. This was a backlot brawl, Hollywood backlot brawl. Yeah. This was Roddy Roddy Piper as acting commissioner or acting president, um, because Gorilla Monsoon, the storyline was Vader had attacked him, so he was out, so Roddy Piper was taking over. And anybody Mm -hmm. knows, anytime you put Piper in charge, no, you don't put Piper in charge. He was taking on Intercontinental Champion Goldust. Now, the original plan for WrestleMania 12 was supposed to be a Miami street fight where Goldust defended the Intercontinental Championship against Razor Ramon. Right, right. But unfortunately, feuding. yeah, because Razor lost the title to him at, mm-hmm. at the Royal Rumble. Right. Now, unfortunately, Razor was suspended for, I, I believe it was uh, drug, the drug use. I believe so, yeah. Six week suspension. And you know what the, you know the thing is? He's actually on the poster. If yes, you look at the was. original poster to, <laughs> to WrestleMania, he's yeah. on the poster. Yeah. And I always thought they, they did that. Because of the ongoing thing with uh, with him leaving with the contract, yeah. Because I really I thought they pulled him off the card because of that. Because if you remember right, the next right. month at the In Your House, he lost and lost bad to Vader. Yeah, I mean, and that that, that wasn't Razor Ramon. Yeah, because remember Razor, he shaved. Remember he shaved too. He looked different. Yeah, he, he, he had no shadow. Different. He didn't. Yeah. I think doesn't he kick out of the? He kicks out of the Vader bomb, doesn't he? He kicks out of something that he kicked out of something, but the match was short. Right, right, yeah, yeah. And it, it was it wasn't a Razor Ramon type no, match. No, it was just and like, Vader, Vader yeah, destroyed him. Yeah, let me just get my page. Yeah, yeah and you know they made him lose, and that was his last pay per view before right. the curtain call. And the curtain call will be discussed later on. Right. Um. So I always thought they 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 punished him and kept him off. But then I was like, well, wait, Diesel's on the card, so why not? Right. Him? Yeah. Exactly. But then I find out. Uh, a few years later, what really happened. Right. So Roddy Roddy Piper versus Goldust. Now this match, it was 16 minutes, 47 seconds, but in reality, it was more like an hour and a half. Right. But let me tell you something. When I heard about this street fight, I was very skeptical. I was like, oh, this is going to be bad. It's going to be a bad match. But they it's not pulled it off. They've done before. Well, yeah, no, you're talking but... about the back lot or the Miami street fight? No, no, I'm talking about the Hollywood back lot. Back oh, lot okay. Lot, which the Miami street fight, I thought would have been, that probably would have been awesome. I could see that being it, a great match too. Especially when a street fight, uh, like again, another match that wasn't recognized at that point. Yeah, Ray, and Razor's. No, they, they did it a year later. Razor's character too, his personality would have been great. But this one, I think I he would have showed up in jeans too. Yeah, yeah, it would have been good. Kind of like, been good. like Piper did, yeah. Yeah, but uh, they pulled this off, man. This was a great match for a street fight. This was a great match. I, I did you did you catch that? And I, I'm sure everybody did that. Piper literally decked him and knocked. Yeah, him. that's why he's bleeding. Yeah. Did, did yeah. he, he, for whatever reason it was, and I don't know if it was accident or he meant to do it, he really was popping him. Yeah, yeah. I think it was by I accident. Mean, he just got, he got too, uh, he got too excited. He got too into it. And then they did the whole gold dust gets into the gold Cadillac. Yeah. Bleeding all over the place now, all over the door. Yeah. Piper gets into the <clears> Ford <throat> Bronco. And now we're doing the old OJ Simpson OJ chase. Simpson, yeah. So that's why I said, if anybody caught really this like, before, yeah. it was really like an hour and a half because this yeah. match didn't conclude till before the main event. Right, right. But in any event, as they went from the Hollywood backlot to the Arrowhead Pond, Roddy Roddy Piper defeated the Intercontinental Champion. And again, I can see why Piper was saving face to, to in, a, in, a, in a street fight to beat Goldust. 
but at the same time, you're not an active competitor and you just beat the intercontinental champion. Right. I mean, you beat one of the champions and I believe he was still sort of undefeated at this time. He hadn't really lost. I, I don't remember him losing prior to this. He, no, because it his, happened, pay-per-view, but, uh... his pay-per-view matches leading to this were Marty Jannetty, Bam Bam Bigelow, Razor Ramon. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't, I, I still believe he was undefeated as the intercontinental champion. So to actually to beat him, I, I, I really didn't understand it. I mean, I, I could see, okay, it was a street fight, so that's strictly Piper's forte. Yeah, so. But, you know, it wasn't for the title or anything, so. Yeah. But I, I did like the street fight, the backlot brawl, street yeah. fight mentality to this. Imagine yeah. what it would have been with Razor and Goldust. Oh, no, it would have been great. You know, it's funny. Remember, I don't know if you remember this. He he calls Vince McMahon during the broadcast, during the during the vehicle pursuit. Before they show the footage, he calls Vince. He's like, he's not going to get away from me. He's like, oh, my God, what's going yes, on? Yes, I do. I do he's remember like, I'm doing that. 80 miles an hour. No. I, showing the old footage, and they're like, yeah. I think Jerry Lawless said, uh, this, this looks, looks very familiar. Yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah. This looks very familiar. It was man. great. It was great. It was it, I liked it, yes. Yeah. From there now, we go to a match, Savio Vega, and I can't say it yet, so I just got to say Steve Austin. Yeah. It wasn't the ringmaster anymore. It was just Steve Austin, but he was still with the, uh, with the Million Dollar Man. He was still man, with the Million Dollar Man, yeah, and, he ha- and Million Dollar Man had the belt. Yeah, he still had the title, Yeah, but he just wasn't being called ringmaster, right. thank God. I, I just didn't like that, and I mean, it, it could have gone a lot worse considering he was eventually, he was supposed to be called uh, Otto, Otto Von Ruthless yes, at one yes, point sure. or, or Fritz, Fritz, Fritz McFrost yeah, or something McFrost. like that. I mean, the, the, the list that they had was just, wow. Thank God, thank God for his wife at the time, which. When she, when she told him, hurry up and drink your, your uh, tea or drink your coffee before it gets stone cold. Yep. I give her all the credit yeah. of the world because and you know it's definitely what, took off. Yeah, you know what? I always thought that he named himself that after the Brian Bosworth movie, Stone Cold. Yeah, that's true. I always thought it was after that, but apparently we, we didn't know until he did his doc until he did the documentary. Yeah, that his wife and yeah. his wife got the credit for it. Yeah, and I thought that was cool. And <clears throat> I don't think he was being called Stone Cold just yet. I think that no. was during the Caribbean Strap match oh, a few yeah. months later, and it was definitely at the King of the Ring. Yeah, it was, that's it was what, later. It was that later was when the Austin awesome 316 came in. But in any event, this was the start of uh, excellent WrestleMania matches for Steve Austin. Because even though you know, and, and nothing against Savio Vega. I mean, he was he was a talented. No, talented he was good. He was a good worker. He was a good worker. And they 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 did work well together because they put on a series of matches uh, through '96 before Steve Austin started. You know, mm-hmm. going after Bret Hart. Austin gets his, his his WrestleMania debut victory, one of many to come. Unfortunately, not the next one. But this was the start of it, and I and I really liked it. And I still believe was he was he still had the hair or or was he bald at this point? Because I know I think, when he came, no, in, he kind of had the, the the bald crew cut, it, but he, he, must he had have, the hair. He must have had a really close cut because I watched this recently and I didn't notice like he he had. Uh, he wasn't bald yet, fully bald. He probably had it really shaved down close though. Because if you remember, after in the end of nineteen ninety five, he had that long hair when he was right, doing yeah, those. Yeah. Those awesome, awesome promos with ECW, ECW yeah. Monday Night Quill on Hogan, yeah, when he was and doing the bro, what you're gonna do, bro. I mean, this, he, he he did, and if everybody does, he went there not to wrestle, but he went there to become relevant again right. since he was fired from WCW. And Paul Heyman helped him out <clears> by <throat> saying, "Well, I know you're hurt. If you're mad, he goes, I'm sitting on the couch, can't work, I'm injured. He goes, Are you mad? Hell yeah, I'm mad. Well, come down here right. and talk to me about it." Talk to the fans about it. He, but, I, and, he, not, he knocked that out of the park. But you know what's the funny thing, which is kind of sad and stupid? WWE, WWF th- saw that and didn't do anything with it. Like, oh, we'll make him the ringmaster. Like, you, exactly. didn't, you didn't just see what this guy was capable of with the promos? Exactly. But anyway, but eventually they let him be. The, the, on, the only thing I think they saw was his one and only match in ECW was for the ECW title against Mikey Whipwreck. And Mikey Whipwreck beat him. But then again, it wasn't for Austin to become the champion. Right. It was so it was a match to see if he was okay. Because remember, he was coming off almost a year-long injury. Right. And then thanks to Hulk Hogan, Bischoff fired him because he just didn't want to work with him. But that's the top. That was the FedEx. Day. That was the FedEx thing, right? FedEx, yeah, the, yeah, he got fired by FedEx. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So in any event, he, he had those killer promos. And then they bring him in. Unfortunately, the ringmaster, thank God the ringmaster actually didn't work. Yeah. You know, and they, they changed it. Because what we got after that was just one of the all-time greatest yeah. gimmicks. So now from there, we go to a return. And I loved when they advertised this match. I was so ecstatic. 
it, and this wasn't even to because the curtain call hadn't happened yet. So this wasn't even a um, punishment for Triple H. But I can't call him that yet because it was the Ultimate Warrior versus Hunter Hearst Hunter Helmsley. Helmsley yeah. Even though I'm going to still say Triple H, yeah, it, it is fair. what it is. Yeah. Now you remember when when Triple H came out to the ring and he took a really long time to come out to yep. the ring and he and he came out with Sable. With Sable, yep. Jerry and this, I think it was to to build up the anticipation of the Warriors' return because he hadn't returned to Raw. They just announced that he would be at the right. At right, WrestleMania. you hadn't seen him or anything, yeah. And and Jerry Lawler's telling Vince, I heard from my sources that he's bald and four hundred pounds. Yeah. Now, of course, Jerry Lawler and his sources, we all know that's not the case. Yeah. He came back in great shape. He was a little smaller. Well, I should say a lot smaller. Yeah. But he still looked good. Yeah. And the Ultimate Warriors music hit, and Anaheim just went nuts. He comes into Damn the okay. ring. He gets attacked right away. Kind of like the honk, like revisiting the honky tonk. Right, match right. He still had his jacket. Earlier. He still had his jacket on and everything. And Triple H pedigrees him. And he just gets right up. Like, your move doesn't phase me. And this was one minute, 39 seconds. Ultimate Warrior wins his return. Yeah. The the the, the story behind that is that it wasn't supposed to be a squash match. It's supposed yeah. to be a little longer. And that Triple H goes up to Warrior backstage and tells him, hey, listen, I have some ideas. And he tells Triple H, get lost. And he so basically Warrior just did a squash match on his own. Well, remember, you got to look at it like this. Warrior was old school coming back into this thing. Yeah, yeah. Tri Triple H was was to him a young punk, but Triple H was part of the group that was Vince was listening to, mm -hmm. the click. You know, at, uh, one, two, three, kid, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Diesel, Razor. He was listening to these guys and, and following their ideas. So Triple H, who's coming off, of, you know, his debut in 95, but with these guys, Walking around the, in the locker room, you know, saying I, I, I'm one of the, I'm part of the top guys. He goes to an old school guy. Old school guy's gonna blow him off. Yeah, definitely. And I agree with it. Because no, I didn't mind. Be Ultimate Warrior's got more, you know, yard time than he has anything. Well, so, but not only I mean, that, you you had to reestablish the Warrior. You had to have Warrior come in and just completely dominate, just to reestablish him. So it worked. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, and and I remember them saying this because it was on. Uh, I read the article in one of the magazines that. Vince had the idea at this point because and, and it was for a split second. He had just gotten Vader. He now has the ultimate warrior. That was his original WrestleMania 13 main event. He said, I want these two guys at the main event at WrestleMania. It wasn't clear who was going to be the champion going in. I'm assuming it was going to be Vader. Mm. That was supposed to be the champion going into that. But as the, as the couple of months went past that, I really think he, 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 he then he said, okay, it's not going to be the main event. I want these two to still fight. And then it was like, no, I'm not going to have this match at all. And then, you know, we'll discuss that later on in another episode of why. But I would have never agreed with that as being the main event anyway. I mean, you're looking at two guys. Those two guys, I think, would have made only a 10-minute match if that. Mm. But in any event, Ultimate Warrior's unfortunate final WrestleMania, and it was his return. It was a good one. Our next match I really liked. And I, and I, and I, was, ashamed, and I was mad because when Diesel was the champion in 95, I really wish at one point he would have defended against the Undertaker. Yeah, I wanted to just well, just one time. Yeah, I because to. you know you, you're you, they were even keeping the Undertaker back in, in 1995 with his feud with Mabel, and, and I and I didn't agree with it, and because it, it wasn't a good feud anyway. But Big Daddy Cool Diesel versus the Undertaker, and this feud started at the what was it? It was at the Royal Rumble in '96, I believe it was. Because even if it was after the match or during it, he got involved during the Bret Hart Undertaker match. Yeah, Diesel. Because you remember, Diesel started the transition where unless you got a black glove on, I'm not shaking your hand. He was he was transitioning yeah, yeah. to heel while still being a baby face with Sean. Right, because they were having tag team matches too. And I, I think they did some house shows together, right? Bret and, uh, Bret and Undertaker versus Diesel and Sean, I think there were some house shows. And, and even uh, towards WrestleMania, it was Brett and Sean versus Diesel, and I don't have. I don't yeah, they, the I remember they did some was. show. Yeah, but I mean, uh, Diesel was eliminated by Shawn Michaels in the Rumble, and you knew it was coming. Him. And I and I thought, well, if there's any way they could put the belt on one of these guys on Diesel before that, then that that rematch would yeah. look good. But I'm glad we got what we got. So in any event, this was a 16 minute 46 second match. 
great match between the but you, two. But I mean, talking about the backstory, remember in your house, steel cage match, Bret Hart versus Diesel, and Undertaker Edward, comes. Yes. Undertaker comes and he pulls him. He comes pulls out from the down, bottom yes. of the ring and he pulls him down, costing him the uh, costing him the match. The match, yeah. So that that was classic. Mm-hmm. And then you know, because that year I'm like, how many title matches is Diesel going to get with all these losses he's getting? Yeah, because yeah. he, I mean, it made sense for him to go out at, in April at the In Your House against Shawn Michaels. But I was just like, okay, he's getting all these chances. He's on this huge losing streak. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why? Are we yeah. doing this? But, but the, April made sense. Yeah, remember, remember the mind games that Undertaker was playing with uh, Diesel when he he saw himself and there was a casket and Diesel and looked in the casket and himself. he saw it. Yeah. yeah, that was classic. That was, that was a good build up. Yeah, it was. And even I um I don't I don't think that Brett and Diesel should have been at um in your house of February. I really think that the rematch from the Survivor Series should have been at the Rumble to solidify that. But then again, I can also see why they didn't do it. Having diesel and Sean, the last two in the rumble and solidifying their breakup right, right, exactly. or starting it. Yeah. So yeah. I, 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 I can, I can see it one way, but I can understand the other way in any event. Again, for all the undertaker fans out there, I don't need to say this, but I will. Anyway, the undertaker beats big daddy, cool diesel in what would be diesel's final WrestleMania period, even on his return. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was at WrestleMania 18, but he didn't fight. Right. And I and, and when we get to 18, I'll I'll vent my frustration on that. I really think he should have had a match too. Yeah. So you know, against Kane or somebody, but he should have he should have been part of the card for sure. So now we go. We've got we're already at the main event. This is a very short card, but there's a reason for it. For the WWE Championship in a 60 minute. Iron Man match that Vince McMahon was extremely skeptical about, but Pat Patterson was adamant about saying, if any two guys can pull this off, these two individuals can. And it was WWE champion Bret the Hitman Hart versus the 1996 Royal Rumble winner, Shawn Michaels. I mean, this was the build up to this was almost as good as the match itself. Yeah, no, absolutely. The, the, the videos of the training. The vignettes and everything. And it was a toss-up match, too. You didn't know who was going to win. I remember watching this, and I wasn't sure who was going to. I had a I, feeling yeah. they were pushing Sean, but I didn't but know. But at the same was. time, Brett could have easily yeah, won this yeah. and kept the title. Yep, for a little longer, yeah. But then it wouldn't have made any sense because now you had this huge buildup with Shawn Michaels leading back to when he did the concussion story in late 95, leading all the way to the Rumble, and especially right. having his match with Owen Hart at the In Your House prior, where the winner gets the title shot. So I really couldn't see them holding him back anymore. Although I, I'm sure Brett would have loved for that to happen. Well, Brett also wanted some time off. He was already tired. He had been on the road for so many years and he was going to do a little acting. He was going to do the Lo- Lonesome Dove, a few episodes of that show. So he was, re- and he was also in a, you know, the contract was coming up. So he wanted to renegotiate, give himself the option to leave if he wanted to, or to, you know, sign a bigger deal. With Which WWE. we knew he was at so, that time. At, at that point, we knew he wasn't going to go anywhere. No, but he had to use not, it as leverage. Not yet. Yeah, yeah not yet. As leverage, you know. So, and great match. Came, yeah, when he came back, you know, obviously he fought, you know, the feud right. with Austin. Right. So, I mean, yeah, the, the vignettes of, of of Sean's training in San Antonio and Brett uh, training up in Canada for this for the stamina of this match was just great. Now, the funny thing about this match, and I got to agree with Brett in this instance. They went the full 60 minutes and there was no, no, no pinfall, no submission, no nothing. Zero, zero on the board. Yeah. Now yeah. a match like that ends in a draw. Yeah. Time limit expires. Yeah. Match is a draw. Because the bell rings and Bret Hart lets go of the sharpshooter. The sharpshooter and Sean never submitted. Right. And I mean, Sean wasn't going anywhere either. So they basically gave him a chance to recompose himself mm-hmm. when, they, when, when they decided to start the match over again. So Bret had a, he had a gripe. Yes, he did, and I got to agree with it. And maybe this was the start of what they planned on for the year they wanted a year later. But they said that, the, the, you know, Brett's on his way back. This match has been ordered to continue. Brett's yelling, why? You know, the, the, we, went the, we went the 60 minutes. We ended in a draw. I'm still the WWE champion. So now Sean's got the momentum. And this match went another one minute, 56 seconds. Shawn Michaels gets the sweet chin music on Brett. Falls down on him, gets the one, two, three. The boyhood dream has come true. Yep. At 30 years old, Shawn Michaels is the WWE champion. 
Yep. I, I got to, I got, I'm a Shawn Michaels fan and I'm a Bret Hart fan. And I've got to agree with Brett on this one, man. I mean, I, I don't, maybe it was their intention to do this for the overtime. But I mean, if it was, if it was, if it was real uh, animosity from Brett in regards to this, I got to agree with them. They always had that plan. Yeah. That, that was always the plan. And because it would have built go, a lot to do the overtime. Yeah. To build, to build heat. That's why Bret Hart just walks, walks out and he kind of turns, but he doesn't shake Sean's hand or anything like that. He just walks out. And and um he they wanted to make everybody seem make everybody believe they really had heat. Owen called him after that and told him, Hey, listen, everybody thinks that you and Sean have real heat because of the way you acted out. He's like, No, we, we planned all this out. Then they do the interview and Brett's upset. He gets to get out of the locker room. Yeah, so that was all planned. He did a great job. Cause then that would set up you a know, year later where there was real heat. Yeah. He, there was a, it was a it was a it was a war. It was a war. It was a work that turned into a shoot. <laughs> a year long. Yeah, because it was a it was the build up for WrestleMania 13. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, I know they wanted to duplicate it, and you know, unfortunately, whenever we get to WrestleMania 13, we'll explain yeah. why. Yeah, you know, the smile and all that. Yeah, but so. overall, with this short card, you know, only six matches on the card. What did you think? Good, very, very good. Uh, I thought it was a, it was a very good um, pay per view. You know, there wasn't the Iron Man match. Obviously, was going to take up a lot of time, more yeah. than an hour. You know, obviously, because they got to do the introductions and all this other stuff. And remember, Shawn Michaels had came in off the zip line. Yeah, that whole I didn't like that entrance. I felt like it was just. It was, I I, th- I felt like it was like extra bantering to the crowd. Yeah, yeah, it was like, and then and Vince was like, ah, 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 oh my god. Like, There's only one Shawn yeah, Michaels. I was like, okay, I was like, all right, all right. And and, and Vince was really trying to build him up. Yeah, and again, yeah. you know, everybody was nervous about that whole thing, and they said, well, Vince won't have anybody do that that, that he wouldn't try himself. So they sent him down on the zip line right, right. during a, a trial and everything. Where I was nervous because I'm like, okay, if this thing rips, we're in serious trouble yeah. if something happens. And yeah, like I said, it was extra bantering to the crowd, and that time. wasn't needed because he was yeah. already he over with the fans. Regardless, you're not going to get the Warrior Hogan WrestleMania ovation that you got, but you're going to get something close to it with these two, even with without yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So. I, I thought this card was an eight out yeah, of ten. Absolutely. Considering what we got the year before, yeah. like I said, the roster was starting to look good and it was promising. However, you did lose two of your key guys coming up down that road. And it was unfortunate for Shawn Michaels to try to hold the company together at a time where they were just a hair away from folding. Yeah. And that was a lot of pressure to put on him, and it was it, you can see it was starting to get to oh, him yeah, yeah, yeah. towards Survivor Series. Absolutely. Absolutely, especially when when he was showing his frustration in the ring, whether it be the pyro wasn't going off right or the fans. Remember uh, when he was coming down and the fan and the railing falls, and he's just he's getting interviewed on Monday Night Raw, and he's just he's getting aggravated. And thing, you can see it was coming. The thing with Vader when he started yelling at Vader in the middle of the match at SummerSlam. He Sean, I don't, Sean was I don't just, think he wanted that match, period. Sean was just, you know. Yeah, and and I'm wondering close. if Vader was supposed to get over in that match because that, like, they, originally, they did, originally they did want the title on Vader. And for, for whatever reason it was, they, they changed it. They pivoted. Yeah, they pivoted. And then from there, he went to, on with Mankind, which is a match. Oh, my God. That's that's hardcore in itself that he, that Sean went through. That's a great match. And then, you, on t- and then after that, you go to Psycho Sid. Yeah. And that they they their storytelling from Survivor Series to Rumble was magnificent. Mm-hmm. I mean, they did really a great yeah, job. Definitely. I think Sean did a great job in 1996 as champion, despite you know what was going on. You know, he had yeah. good matches with Bulldog, with Sid, with Vader, with Mankind. I mean, he he did what no he his do matches were. The business ability. was down. Business was down, but and it wasn't his fault. Just it like it wasn't Diesel's fault. fault the year before, yeah. where the ratings are down, and he's trying to carry right. the, the the company. No fault to yeah. Sean. His first title reign was good. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So that's WrestleMania 12. Uh, where are we going from there? We're, as far as the retro Russell, series. Well, we're, we're, uh, we got two more before we take a break on WrestleManias, right. and then we, we'll start the King of the Ring series. All right, so we, uh, WrestleMania 13 will be next, and we'll be talking about the famous uh, Matt, I Quit match between Brett and Austin, yep. as well as what happens in the result of the main event. I mean, WrestleMania 13 had some great tales, and then we'll finish temporarily with WrestleMania 14 with one of my personal all-time favorite main events. All right. 
Okay. All right. That's not so, to say, people, that we're not going to talk about WrestleMania later on. We'll get back to right, it right. during WrestleMania season next yeah. time. Definitely. All right. So you guys let us know what you think about this WrestleMania. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon. Take care, guys.